Mr. Pierre serves as the Minister for Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy. I have the great honor of inviting to the microphone to present special remarks the Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister of St. Lucia. Thank you very much, Mr. Master of Ceremonies. Let me recognize the President of the Corporate Republic of Guyana, the President of the African Export Import Bank, Prime Minister of Guyana, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and other dignitaries of CARICOM, and the Cabinet of Ghana. I want also to thank the President of Ghana for the excellent arrangements that <clears throat> he has made for us and for my dedication. I thank you very much. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the Caribbean shares a profound and deep-rooted connection with the African continent, which traces back to the harrowing times of the transatlantic slave trade. Today, the echoes of this shared history resonate in the culture, music, traditions, and even the spirit of resilience of the Caribbean nations. Allow me to share a few thoughts with this gathering, underscoring our commitment to creating a shared prosperous future with our African sisters and brothers. You, you will agree that we all recognize the immense potential, potential, potential that lies in strengthening economic ties for robust trade links and investments, tapping into shared markets, especially in developing sectors such as technology and renewable energy. Solution remains committed to fostering cultural and, and educational exchanges, aiming to bridge our heritage and histories while building solid partnerships between our educational institutions for knowledge transfer and research. In my first policy statement, after being sworn as Prime Minister on July 28, 2021, in observance of Emancipation Day on Monday, August 2, 2021, I announced that I, that I had instructed the Ministry of Education to prepare a syllabus for the teaching of African history at our educational institutions in St. Lucia. From, from last year in St. Lucia, Emancipation Day activities stretched over a four-week period to emphasize, to emphasize the historical significance of the official end of the transatlantic slave trade. My cabinet has mandated that an experienced uh, diplomat prepare for its consideration a comprehensive policy on ways in which we can strengthen our economic and social relationships with the African continent. Meanwhile, St. Lucia is ready to engage other OECS and CARICOM countries with a view to sharing a joint diplomatic presence with countries in the African continent. Addressing the pressing challenge of climate change and advocating for environmental sustainability is at the forefront of our agenda as we engage in research, policy making, and the sharing of green technological innovations. In the area of healthcare and well being, our regions have much to gain from joint medical research and sharing best practices in public health management. This need was made even more evident in the wake of the global COVID pandemic. Enhancing our infrastructure and connectivity for improved transportation links and technological innovation also remains a priority. Making our region more accessible to each other should foster trade, tourism, and people-to-people -people contact. We are committed to learning and sharing best sustainable farming and fishing practices aimed at enhancing 
the CARICOM food security agenda. In all our endeavors, we underscore the importance of inclusive growth, creating avenues for youth economic engagement and women empowerment. In this way, we can collectively strive towards a future marked by pros prosperity, stability, human rights, and shared success. This forum symbolizes a bridge, a vital link, fostering economic and cultural relations between the African continent and the Caribbean region. Our coming together here in the Caribbean Republic of Ghana reflects our shared commitment to building resilient economies and communities for enhanced trade, investment, and cultural exchange. I believe that the theme of this year's forum, creating a shared prosperous future, is apt and timely. We are here to build on the progress at achieved at Active 2022, consolidating our gains and setting a clear and actionable agenda for the future. In the past year, we have made some strides in deepening our engagement with the African continent. The African Export Bank has played a pivotal role in facilitating trade and investment flows between Africa and the Caribbean, offering the financial instruments and support needed to bring our business communities together. Solutions were one of the first countries to sign the treaty with the African Export Import Bank. Looking ahead, Solutions committed to deepening our engagement with Africa, leveraging the opportunities presented by the African Export Import Bank and other strategic partners. We anticipate significant work in areas such as technology transfer, innovation, sustainable tourism, and the creative industries. In the tourism sector, we envision a future where Africa and the Caribbean are connected through direct air and sea links, enabling travel, cultural exchange, and economic cooperation. This is not a dream, but a tangible goal that we are working diligently to achieve. Ladies and gentlemen, the journey ahead is filled with opportunity and potential. The connections we forge, the partnerships we build, and initiatives we undertake today will pave the way for a future of prosperity and collaboration between Africa and the Caribbean. As a united people, the continent of Africa and the Caribbean can transcend boundaries and overcome the historical obstacles that seek to divide us. Let us together seize the moment, embrace the opportunities, and work together to build a future that is bright, prosperous, and interconnected. I thank you.